From media laughing stock to media craze, from thousands of viewers to millions. Welcome to the season three world championship final! Esports in the last decade or so has eclipsed all expectations. Never before in the history of Dota have we had a prize pool of this magnitude, 20,700,000 plus extra change. Now the industry is set to further mature with the announcement of Blizzard's Overwatch League and Riot's NA LCS shifting to a franchise model. We're going to be sharing revenue with teams and pros. We're going to be establishing a players association to support and protect pros. But while esports has come a long way since its humble beginnings, it hasn't been without its set of controversies. I will make sure you will lose the house. That's a, a problem. They did she. I just want to apologize to MLG and the fans and Riot. What is he doing? They just went in here to die! And we found this new site called CSGO Lotto. From the NFL's deflate gate and head trauma controversies to the MLB's doping scandals and match fixing that dates back to 1919, one thing is pretty clear when it comes to professional sports. Sometimes the spirit of competition gets lost in the money and fame, and esports is no exception. Back in 2009, esports was at best a buzzword in the West, but on the other side of the world, the industry was already an established hub of opportunity. You need to see these. With the rise of StarCraft's popularity in Korea, a significant number of illegal gambling websites sprung up as a way for people to capitalize on the number of yearly competitions that took place within the country. By 2010, several brokers representing these sites used their connection with the Pro League circuit to entice players to throw matches. The money involved made it an easy sell and more than 10 players, including some of the game's most prominent members like CJ Entis' Savior and STX Souls, Hwasin, participated in the scandal. The scandal turned the esports world upside down. Even the mainstream media, who had little to no interest in esports in 2010, wrote about the scandal, comparing it to the 1919 Black Sox scandal, in which eight members of the Chicago White Sox baseball team were found to have deliberately lost games. By 2011, a new title, League of Legends, was gaining popularity, especially in the West. Reaching 188,000 viewers on our stream. It's ridiculous! That, I mean, we were expecting something like that for the Grand Finals, maybe. But much like its RTS predecessor, the game's growth meant that its integrity would be put to the test. Then, in 2012, League of Legends experienced its first major scandal. Team Curse here, and we just want to apologize to MLG and the fans. Team Dignitas and Team Curse NA privately agreed to play out the first match as an all-random, all-mid, ahead of the MLG Summer Championships Grand Finals, and their collusion cost them $40,000 in winnings. The interesting thing about this is that Dignitas has their seating relied on this game. If they win this series, they'd move into second place and face a different team in the first round, they dodge out of Team Dynamic. What is going on? <laughs> in the same year, during the World Championships, a critical design flaw with the stage allowed players who looked up at the venue's main screen to catch glimpses of the enemy's mini-map. The screens are behind the players, so there's always a chance of cheating. Though the accusations initially began online, Riot's internal investigation found that five instances of the players looking up at the Jumbotron took place the most severe of which occurred during a match between Korea's Azubu Frost and the North America's Team Solo Mid. Woong, the AD carry for Azubu Frost, was caught looking at the venue screen and the team subsequently modified their gameplay based on the information gathered, effectively nullifying TSM's level 1 strategy. The first game was kind of disappointing to me, mainly because they did cheat. Though some people questioned exactly how advantageous the screen watching was, the community was furious and esports integrity was once again under the microscope. In 2013, esports as a whole took a giant leap forward. League of Legends hosted the most viewed esports event of the year, with 32 million unique viewers, an exponential growth from 2012's 8.2 million, and Dota 2's The International Tournament handed out over $2.8 million in prize money. But as the scene attracted more views and higher payouts, it also attracted more people. 
some of which did not have the industry's best interests at heart. In 2013, Alexei Solo Berezin famously threw a Dota 2 match for $322. They just went in here to die! And a rogue employee at ESEA uploaded malware into the company's software, allowing him to farm bitcoins unbeknownst to the software's users. The malware initially began as an experiment run by ESEA on two of their own admins' computers for the purposes of testing Bitcoin integration for their clients, but the company eventually decided to scrap the project. Though the project was scrapped, one of the employees involved in the beta test decided to use the code to mine Bitcoins for personal gain. That's, that's un unreal. Absolutely is. I cannot believe it. I think most people couldn't. Due to the excessive strain that mining put on users' computers, many ESEA users were left with fried video cards and astronomical electricity bills. In the end, a class action lawsuit saw ESEA hit with a $1 million fine for a combined total gain of just over $3,700. I've noticed that they kind of messed themselves up with the money situation. In 2014, the entire International Esports Federation was exposed for having a males-only rule that excluded females from participating in their Hearthstone tournament for the upcoming IESF World Championships. The controversy first took off when a Redditor posted a picture of the ruling outlined in the Finnish IESF qualifier leading up to the main tournament, questioning the organizer's decision to separate the two genders. When the IESF stepped in to defend themselves, they said that their decision to separate the two genders was part of their efforts to try and legitimize esports as an actual sport. We have evidence that this happened. So. Yeah. The world was furious. No one could understand how such an outdated policy could still exist, let alone be upheld for such ridiculous reasons. Finally, just a day after the IESF statement went viral, the company decided to open up its tournaments to all participants. A huge victory, guys. A huge victory. Yeah. Yeah, well done and well played. Though the scandals of 2013 and 2014 were big, no amount of heartbreak and disappointment could prepare the esports community from what would later be known as one of esports' most successful yet scandal-ridden years. In January of 2015, CSGO's fans were reeling from what could only be described as the biggest match-fixing scandal of the game's short competitive lifespan. Netcode guides beating iBuyPower on season. iBuyPower's CSGO team consisted of North America's best in-game leader, Dazed, a brilliant support player, AZK, and NA super talent, Steel, one of the best oppers in the world, Skadoodle, and 18-year-old CSGO genius, Swag, and they knowingly threw their match against Netcode Guides, a team that they would have typically trounced back in August 2014. There was already some speculation that the match was thrown as soon as it ended, but it was quickly brushed aside as nothing more than a rumor. This is just really surprising. The story then later resurfaced in 2015 when esports journalist Richard Lewis brought to light incriminating text messages that Derek Deborn Born sent to his ex-girlfriend. Valve responded in January 2015 and they banned indefinitely four of the five members of the team as well as several others in a highly publicized blog post entitled Integrity and Fair Play. It happens. From baseball to boxing, professional athletes have taken dives for bribes from professional gamblers. It does destroys the integrity of the game. Then in February of 2015, League of Legends was hit with a scandal of astronomical proportions. You know that your mom signed the contract with us. Yeah. I will make sure you will lose the house. That's a, that's a promise. Due to several missed payments from his previous organization, Super Hot Crew, and facing concerns about the potential for missed payments from his new team, Meet Your Makers, Marcin Corey Wolski decided it best to leave MIM in February. We have yesterday found out that Corey will not be playing anymore. Blizzard will be playing in place of Corey, whose future with the team is still uncertain. When informed of the news, MIM manager Sebastian Rotterdam was livid. He threatened the youngster with promises of future legal action and went as far as to say that he would see it that his mother lose her house. The threats, coupled with subsequent action by the team to prevent Corey from joining another organization, saw the mid laner return to the team's starting lineup after just two weeks of absence. And as you guys see on the graphic and you guys have heard already, Corey is back in that lineup for Meet Your Makers. The team was fined 5,000 euros and Rotterdam was hit with an indefinite ban. 
In 2016, esports as a whole took yet another step forward as interest in the industry turned into even more money as multiple investors entered the space in various forms. But while the rest of the industry was making massive strides forward, StarCraft took two steps back. Oh my gosh, you, you feel the pain that they feel. Still reeling from 2015's match-fixing scandal, one of the game's greatest players, Lee Life Siang Hoon, was arrested and indicted in 2016 for receiving money to intentionally throw maps. If the scene had any hope for redemption, Life's arrest marked the death of that. This is like one of those moments where it's the universe just works against you. But StarCraft wasn't the only game that saw gambling create controversy around the scene. A large portion of the money that came in with the influx of new investors in 2016, particularly in CSGO, was coming from websites that allowed Counter-Strike players to wager their in-game items. Yesterday and the day before, I have amassed probably amount a win of $16,000. And if you don't believe me, let me just show you part of my inventory. They sponsored the game's most popular players, the biggest tournaments, and everything else. And we found this new site called CSGO Lotto. Though largely unregulated, these websites appear to be relatively harmless on the surface. That was until a YouTuber called Honor the Call exposed the dishonest and underhanded business practices behind one of the biggest gambling websites at the time, CSGO Lotto. President Trevor Martin and Vice President Thomas Kessel. So these two own the website CSGOLotto.com and they allegedly do fake gambling and pretend to win thousands of dollars and also sometimes pretend to lose it too. Without disclosing that they were owners of the website, fellow YouTubers Trevor T. Martin Martin and Thomas Pro Syndicate Cassell promoted CSGO Lotto to their combined audience of 10 million subscribers. When the shady dealings came to light, Valve responded with a cease and desist letter that forced the shutdown of a majority of the gambling websites in July. Now, in 2017, with the announcement of NALCS franchising and the continued anticipation of the soon-to-come Overwatch League, that includes major sports investors like Robert Kraft of the New England Patriots and Jeff Wilpin of the New York Mets, esports takes yet another step towards maturity and professionalism. So the question is, how will this affect your favorite esport? Only time will tell. But what we do know is that despite the influx of outside money, despite the corruption, and despite the scandals, it's always been the communities that have kept esports thriving, and in the end, it'll be the communities that'll continue to ensure that esports grows beyond our wildest dreams. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content, be sure to hit that subscribe button.